there is no question that global demand for energy will rise here. It's forecast to double by 2040, not least because many people are only now gaining access to electricity for the first time. Like in Uganda, for example. Tell us more, Sharon. In the East African countries' rural areas, where there's been absolutely no electricity so far, the situation might improve due to a new hydropower plant that's being built. It's already had a huge impact on the region because local farmers were forced to make way for it. But the hope is that the facility's environmental benefits will prove its critics wrong in the end. The Sebunoli family make their way to their former home. They were forced to move away from here four years ago because their house was too close to the site of a new hydroelectric power plant. It feels good to be back here in the mountains. This is where I was born. The family farmed three acres of land here at an altitude of 1,500 meters. They can still use a small area of it, so they return regularly. Four other families were also forced to move to make way for the new power plant. The concrete channel, where the Lubilia River is to be redirected in the future, is almost ready. Peter Chimuli works as a project manager for a Danish company called Frontier Energy. It specializes in developing renewable energy projects in Africa. The Lubilia River will still be flowing in this natural course. Um, uh, uh, suddenly there will be a reduced flow in especially the dry months, but during the wet months, it will be like normal. There will be no, almost no difference. The channel is two kilometers long. What's decisive for producing power is the force with which the water drives the turbines. So from here, the water will pass through steel pipes, plunging 264 meters down the mountain. The reason we need the, the, the concrete canal is to convey water out of the river to this point where we are, which is a 4 bay. And, and what we're looking for is a net head um, between this point and the powerhouse where we generate all our electricity. The entire project is set to cost $16 million. Before the work even began, a feasibility study was carried out to show whether the location was suitable. That study alone cost $600,000. The United Nations Green Climate Fund now provides money for these kinds of initiatives. Two turbines are due to arrive soon. The hydroelectric power plant is designed to produce over five megawatts of electricity when running at capacity. That's enough for 37 and a half thousand households. The plant is supposed to provide electricity to this remote region on the border to the Democratic Republic of Congo but the local residents aren't yet linked to the power grid. So, for the time being, they won't benefit. What we tell them is the truth. We tell them that as a generator and in Uganda, we cannot uh, provide electricity directly to them. But what we can do though is to, let's say, intercede with the necessary uh, uh, department or you know, the government authority to bring about the aspect of you know, no electricity in a particular area for them to you know, focus on that. That's, that's what we do. Back to the Sebanoli family. From January to June this year, there was a drought. That meant the family was unable to harvest anything. The house only came with a small plot of land, and the banana plants are still too young to bear fruit. If they didn't have the remainder of their farmland up in the mountains, the family would be even worse off. Once a week, employees from Frontier Energy visit them. Four of the children are no longer going to school because the family can't afford to pay the fees. We, we will definitely look into the whole issue of the land being far and just review that with them. You know, we, we just go back and, you know, just look at what led us or what led them to choose that place over, let's say, one that is near. And then, you know, we'll, we'll find some way of, of, of bringing to them a piece of land that is closer to them. The father and one of his sons are currently working as day laborers to help the family scrape by. 
the hydroelectric power company still has their work cut out for them. So that's all we have for today. We hope you like the stories we brought you from Africa and Europe. See you again next week. It's bye bye from Kenya. And bye bye from here in Lagos, Nigeria. We hope you join us again next week. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Bye bye.